farmers in the United States have had huge problems with the last several growing seasons, especially with wetness to a degree that they've never experienced beforehand. If we see a change in uh, the climate in the regions where you have studied it over a period of time, and so uh, basically more variability, the, 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 the moment in which the rains comes is different than when it comes, we came before, um, the, the amount is different, it can be more or less, but it's still different. The next question is, what is the cause and how do we, you know, make it rational for, for us to say the cause to this uh, change that you've measured? So, for example, if you just focus on the regions where you have analyzed the data the, the most, what is the cause? The cause is that for whatever reason, the atmosphere is hotter and it changes where moisture goes. Um, I can be more specific that if you want, but you know, not getting into politics, whether it's you know, primarily driven by man or it's just a natural cycle, that fact is just simply true. And it affects the, like, you know, how moisture and water moves around the planet. Um, and that's what drives rain. And so as far as, you know, what to do about it, I mean, you know, there's two core ideas. There's one of mitigation and there's one of adaptation. Mitigation is, you know, inherent, most is inherently based on the idea that you can, I, that it's driven by man primarily, or that man has the ability to change what's happening at a global scale. And while that there's, you know, some technologies that might have promised down the road, the simple truth is we can't do it currently and that it's changing how agriculture works today. And to be clear, you know, it's not just a problem in the developing world. I mean, farmers in the United States have had huge problems with the last several growing seasons, especially with wetness to a degree that they've never experienced beforehand. Um, and so, you know, that that's the issue of mitigation of like, how do you deal with it? Or how do you correct it? And then there's adaptation, which is this is happening, how do we make the best of it? And that's the one that, you know, is re the reality of how we're going to proceed as a species, because, you know, we haven't figured out how to reverse it. And agriculture is going to change for it, we're going to grow more drought resistant crops, we're going to grow crops in different places than we have historically. And that the, you know, being a farmer is, has always been difficult. And the next, you know, several decades are going to be harder than ever beforehand, just because every year is going to be novel for them. And that is an incredibly challenging situation for anyone, much less one that relies on, you know, things that are outside their control happening in order for their crop to be successful. So uh, one of the things we have captured here is that um, you have measured, this is uh, the, the, the scientific thought, uh, a weather variability that has increased a lot in the equatorial region. And then um, it, to the point of completely disrupting the, the agricultural uh, cycle there, uh, whereas you have uh, measured in the developing world, so at the, uh, if, we lo if you like at the latitude, at the northern latitude, you have measured tangible changes uh, but not in the same magnitude. Can your technology be used or partially used uh, to int when bigger effects would be seen at the northern latitude? So, yeah, this is something that we've uh, worked on in the past and have some engagements currently. The thing to understand about agriculture is that it's no different than other biological systems in the following way. Changes don't happen gradually, that there is, it's a buffered system. And at a certain point, the ability to buffer runs out and all of a sudden you get over a tipping point. And that, um, and so the real question is where and when are those tipping points going to occur? Um, you know, in the United, in the US, the one that probably has gone the most uh, discussion and you know concern is water in the um, in the southwest. 
um, you know, is places like, you know, Phoenix going to be viable given the uh, snowfall that's happening uh, upstream, um, you know, along the Colorado River and, you know, issues like that. But, you know, there's also, I mean, that applies to farmers just as much as anyone else. And so with regard to your specific question, it's really at work in the intersection of understanding the bio biological systems for when those tipping points are likely to be occurring, like in terms of like, is it a three degrees rise in temperature, a four degree? Is it precipitation going below 80% of current levels? That kind of thing. And then looking at what the, um, you know, the, the trends are saying. I mean, you know, in the tropics, you can literally see just like you need nothing more complicated than a linear regression over the last 15 years to, be, to she see the variability. In the Northern latitudes, it's not that extreme yet, but what you are seeing is a huge amount of the increase of the variance. Like it's no longer a stationary system. And the question is just at what point uh, do we have enough years where it, it, it's outside of those bounds that it tips over into a new regime that we have not experienced as a people before. 